Stand up. To the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Aaron, you want to do the uh, roll call? Here. 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 Uh, anyone who has a cell phone, please silence it so that we don't get interrupted. I appreciate it. Um, discussion information items. Um, FOIA requests. We had uh, two, two FOIA requests, a detailed ledger of revenue and expense. We provided a summary of fiscal year 17 and also directed uh, the requester to uh, the website to where they can see detailed bills reports on a monthly basis at, from the school board page. That was related to the the athletic, athletic programs, right? Correct. Yeah. Oh. And then how many school resource officers? We got another one like this again today from another source. So uh, obviously that's a hot topic in, uh, in the state and across the country. Um, so we provided our MOU with the village of Riverside and just laid out what we had. All right. Um, Can I ask one question on the FOIA? Sure. Mom here. I know you were just responding because you assumed word it wrong, but it was worded in such a way that it says, send us a copy of the agreement that uh, gives you the authority to have a office. So we have the authority to do that. The, the agreement only allows us to. Yeah, the agreement. Office. We don't need the police department's authority to have an office. Correct. But okay. I assume you just were answering. We just, to, to be responded, we showed him the MOU so that it shows he's an auxiliary, okay. which helps give him the concealed carry under, at our building. Okay. Thank you. Um, police department radios. No update. Going? Okay, no update. Um, point, we have a chance for visitors to make some statements. Is anyone on the my left side been talking, my right side talking? No, nope, that way I, I will not read the... Uh, Visitor statements, uh, commentary, the additional discussion items, um, Board of Education. Um, members have any additional items they want to add? I'll look to my left, I'll look to my right, no? All right. Let's go to the consent agenda, action items, approval of minutes. So Mary, Mary Ann received a few minor changes. I believe she made all those changes, correct, Mary Ann? Yes. They're included. And we're also, I think we're putting on the same, are we putting on the same consent agenda, the uh, registration fees? Is that on the same, yeah, so, so um, someone want to read the resolution then we can open up for discussion. Yeah, resolved that the Board of Education Township High School District 208, Cook County, Illinois, hereby takes the following action on the listed consent agenda items. Approves minutes from the meetings held on March 13th, 2018, open and closed. Approves registration fees 2018-2019 school year as presented and amended in the April 10th, 2018 board agenda packet. So we want to second, second that? All right, so we want to open for discussion the minutes or the registration fee. Anyone have any items they want to discuss on it? No? Nope. All right, uh, go for the vote. Ms. Sierra? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Gretchen? Yes. All right, we have some old business, life safety items, capital improvements. No updates. Um, we'll pull together the facilities uh, council, advisory council. We met, I mean, obviously I meet every Tuesday with uh, Joel and Scott. Uh, and um, so we're going to bring together the facility advisory council uh, in May before we hit the summer season and just bring them up to speed on how we're addressing uh, the current Amendment 22 life safety items, how far we've gotten. And, uh, the schedule work we have set for the summer but so far Joel and Scott have done a good job managing that and uh, we're within budget so how big how big of an issue how big of projects do we have for this upcoming summer all all internal stuff it's internal uh, we're doing some plumbing work and some, some parts in the area um, we're not doing the pool and humidifier system this year there's no roof work any areas are going to be closed off for our summer activities that we got normally going on? No. No, we have to do some HVAC work and some sprinkler work, alarm work, but I think that can work in portions of the building while we have summer school going on so we can move around that. All right. This will be the first summer where it should be somewhat 
quiet in regards to um, activity with the facilities. All right, uh, press plus policy issue 97. Okay, so the, the policy advisory council meeting met uh, before today's board meeting, so I'll have any suggested changes um, to the board for um, the committee of the whole meeting in April, I think it's the 24th. Um, the only, we only had three minor changes and that was dropping in, two of them were dropping in the word designee on two policies and social worker on the one policy. Um, Mr. Walsh submitted two comments uh, in regards to policy 4 colon 440. Do we have any tax exempt um, debt? We do, that's our life safety bonds and our refinancing bonds are tax exempt. The uh, working cash bonds are were taxable working cash, so they do not apply. We have a board policy that talks about the annual record keeping. That's 4 colon 40, 4, 42, 4 colon 42, which we approved in 2015. Um, Scott and the auditor work each year to make sure we're not violating our tax exempt, but I, I spoke again today with Liz just to make sure I had a good understanding of it. To violate the tax exempt would be if we use that bonded money to, to build or uh, maintain or fix a facility and then we uh, sold it to a for-profit business that would violate your tax exempt or rented it to a for-profit business. I sold it to a for-profit business. Um, the other way would be if the uh, interest rates that we're making on that money uh, exceeded the yield, which Liz said that should never Our really be a real, yeah, the, yeah, should never be a realistic <coughs> answer, so we should be fine. And a 39-page resolution the board approved in October had all that stuff cited in there. I went back and read through that today with Scott. So <laughs> we're in a good place. Um, Tim, you know, I do need a little explanation on your, you had submitted a comment, I think it was on 5 colon 20. Is that the harassment? Yeah. And so this, just so you know, the, know this, this, this whole point. thing now is going online. So green is stuff they're adding, pink is stuff they're deleting. If you see anything in blue, um, a, baby, a real light baby blue is supposed to be from us. I, so this does not have any comments from us yet. So My, we were at something about it's redundancy. It's not something we did. It's something the way they trapped the policy on the. Look at board page. I don't know what to say. Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Yeah. So they deleted the pink section, and then you said that it was redundant when the department of green. Yeah. It's, so it tells whom to contact with report and place your contract, et cetera. And then, hold on. And then if you turn to uh, page 58, I, I, I highlighted the wrong. You were talking about retaliation? Yeah, to you find know, I it. Had to look at it again. I, I made a mistake on which side I but there's two different provisions on how to report the complaints. So w w I can focus on that to just make I, sure. I it's highlighted the wrong section. You know what? I'll look at. It. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. This is the first meeting. Yeah, we don't need to prove it in the cow. But I mean, if there's a, if there after I talk with Tim, and then I'll put it out for the 24th. I think we should be able to approve it on the 24th. There's only five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The policy council. You'll see the changes are dropping in the word superintendent or designee. So it's very basic. Um, and so that was the only changes we had. And then I'll work with Tim on see what he was concerned about. Sorry about that. And that was the only two he submitted. Um, so that's all I have in regards to the policy. All right, the next item is the uh, approval of the telephone company services. I'll let Scott work on this, but uh, the, I think the action sheet summarizes all the steps that have been taken uh, by Scott and Mike Connors, who oversee this. Um, and I know Scott followed up with uh, the, uh, our legal counsel and Comcast in regards to the uh, two or three questions that Mr. Walsh submitted on the contract, so I'll let him talk to that. And he also has a follow-up on, there was a lot of discussion about last week, last board meeting about fiber and copper, and when one goes down, when, how will the other one work? So he has his answers on that. <laughs> Okay, so first thing is, uh, there was a red line copy in there. There were a couple questions submitted 
Um, there was a question about uh, managing versus monitoring the actual system. I did speak with Comcast on that. Uh, managing would be more of the internal control within the school district, and the monitoring is what Comcast does just to make sure that there is a dial tone from the fiber coming to the school. So they do monitor to make sure that their service is up and running, and then the managing side would be the district's um, portion of it where we manage it internally. Um, as far as the question with the copper lines, uh, if the fiber line goes out, uh, the lines automatically switch over to the copper. Um, any phone can dial out, but we have a limited number of copper lines available. However, being 2018, the majority of the staff and students have a cell phone, um, which would be available to make calls out. I do not see an issue with um, if the line goes out switching over to copper because we have several ways to be able to communicate out of the building. And so the way I understood that from Scott this morning when we went through that was if seven or ten people picked up the phone and all tried to dial out, only the three or four that got to the copper line first, those four would get out, the other two would get the busy stages. So, no. so it's strictly for like an emergency purposes with it, so E911 backup. Yeah. So at that point, <clears throat> you'd get to your fiber, it's going to be fixed, right? Like, yeah. Auto exactly. That's why we have in the contract with the four hours of max down time with Comcast. So recommendation is to approve the three-year service agreement with Comcast from July 1, 2018 until June 30th, 2021. That answered all the questions that were submitted? Except they didn't answer the question based on the way I asked it on what they're doing with the monitoring. They're clearly indicating they have a right to have access to what is said over the phone lines. That's what they're in 9.6. And the concern is then they're saying because they don't have the data, they're not indemnifying or insuring us if there's a breach of the data. So I, I realize they told you that, but mm -hmm. that's not what their agreement says. So my only concern still, I mean, again, maybe we'll have to accept it. I mean, I've negotiated agreements with Comcast. They're not easy to negotiate with, but I think our attorney should take a look and see if they agree with what Comcast said. And if they don't, try to get them to change it. And I think we can prove it pending, you know, Kevin and the uh, attorney talking to Comcast. What they're telling you is not what their agreement says. Okay. I'm not surprised they told you what they told you, to be perfectly honest yeah. with you. I just wanted to get a handle on, okay, monitoring versus yeah. managing. So I, I'm just suggesting... So your concern, approved. Tim, is at the bottom paragraph that says Comcast shall have no liability or responsibility for content received or distributed by customer or its users through the service? Yeah, because in a different paragraph, they're saying they can monitor it. The only way you can monitor it is to have access to it. So if they have it, the data, and then we're saying they have no liability for it, then we're responsible if they have a data breach, which happens all the time nowadays. So I just suggest we have our attorney take another look, and maybe they'll say uh, they don't read it the same way I do. That's what we pay them for. Okay. And if they do think it's worth it to go back to Comcast and say your answer doesn't uh, jive with what the language in the agreement says. And, and again, I think we've done this before. We can mm -hmm. still approve the agreement pending them resolve, you know, Kevin working with the attorney to resolve the one issue. If other people, if the other board members agree. No, I'll, I'll be agreeing with that. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, that's fine. Subject to, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. I understand. All right, do we have to modify the um, resolution? resolution? Yeah. yeah. I could do it. All right. Well, you want me to read it? Yeah. The Board of Education Township High School District 2A, Cook County, Illinois, hereby approves the three year service of your Tavo Company service with Comcast pending the superintendent working with the board attorney to resolve the issue concerning Comcast access and protection of the data, as presented in the April 10th, 2018 board agenda packet. Good. Second. Second. Go for the vote. Yeah. 
Sreska? Yes. Ms. Sierra? Yes. Mr. Smithing? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Rich? Yes. All right, new business, payment of bills. There were three or four questions submitted on this. Scott, you want to start off with the yes, question? Yes, um, if we could go to the board book page 95. And we're looking at NICOR gas for 266.49. Oops, what's up? Because the way you signed it, it's hard to put the note. My question really was about two payments for the skilled nursing services. Oh, okay. I tried to put it next to that. All right, uh, I can I can answer that too, though. Okay. That's those are um, nurses uh, minutes that are needed via a special education student. Okay. On that. I wanted to make sure we weren't. We got our own nursing care. Yeah, yeah, but we have some. We have special ed. No, 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 no it wasn't one. for somebody. No. Only for our nurse. Okay. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, board book page ninety six under technology management revolving fund for twenty two fifty. This is the monthly cost for the district's primary internet service provider. It is the Illinois Century Network. This service is provided by the state of Illinois. Oh, okay. Uh, board book page 101 under transportation for wellness. Wellness field trip. Field trip, yes, wellness field trip, sorry. Uh, first student, our normal um, contracted uh, transportation service could not accommodate the trip and Infinity Transportation, a third party vendor was used. Um, the credit card was used to guarantee payment per Infinity's agreement. This was the lowest cost available for the district. What kind of field trip did we need? Yeah, we're $16 dollars this, in buses. this one was a leadership up to Wilmot Mountain. Okay, next. And then on board book page 102, in regards to the American Express card, the district uses the American Express card to get the best pricing available through Amazon, Amazon Prime, and eBay. All staff members understand that purchases must be approved prior to the purchase internally through the business office. Um, these purchases can be made through other vendors. Sometimes, though, the cost would be 20 to 40 percent higher. Um, utilizing the American Express card guarantees the district the best price available at that particular time of the purchase and the district is also tax exempt with Amazon and also eBay and shipping is either next day or second day for free. So I talked a little bit with Scott about this just because uh, he said there was, might even be a bigger payment coming through next month um, but we've gotten into the uh, where Mike Connors he's now using more online vendors uh, because he can get stuff much cheaper um, and the same with Joel um, or if we just went through possibly Granger, and we yes, we would have the Prompt Payment Act, but it'd be like 30% more. Um, so these, in a sense, it's helping us be, you know, fiscally responsible. At the same time, we're putting it on the American Express. We do only have two American Express cards. I have one, and Scott has one. And so they have to request permission to do it before they do it. Uh, and they come down, and they usually show us the prices, or uh, they show Eileen Pusateri to make sure there's money in the account. So. Um, we do have a checks and balance in place with it. It's, it sounds like you are getting, we are getting a tax exempt on yes. this now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But there's going to be a bigger one coming through next month, yes. right? Because Mike's buying a large piece. Mike um, <laughs> did purchase quite a few laptops to update uh, staff members and administrators. Okay. And I think that was the last question submitted, correct? Yes, yes on the board bills. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, budget amendment. Oh, we got to approve the bills. Do we take a vote? We got to. All right. Can we get a I'm good. resolution? Resolve Education Township High School District 208, Cook County, Illinois, hereby approves the payment of bills as presented and listed in the April 10, 2018 board agenda packet. Second. No for the vote. Oh. Yes. Mr. Smithing? Yes. Ms. Tanner? Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Yes. And Mr. Rich? Yes. All right, now we can talk about the uh, 
budget amendment. Budget amendment. Fiscal. Okay, so the I think Scott did a good job writing up the uh, background here. So the board approved the budget in September. Uh, that's the deadline that's required by the state. Once uh, we finished our bond approval, we, we did the resolutions, uh, the COW meeting in October, and once everything closed up, it was uh, November. Um, and so once we got all the final paperwork and everything, uh, Scott had discussed with the auditor what's the best way to, to address this, and for full transparency purposes, it's to amend the budget, uh, which the state does allow you to do. But you almost have to like restart the process slightly and that tonight we're asking the board approve a tentative but uh, an amended tentative budget and then it will sit open uh, for 30 days online and a hard copy in the business office and then the board can take formal action uh in april or excuse me uh, until may uh, when they will approve uh, the formal amended 2018 budget so we um you know, we went back through, and I, what I suggested to Scott to do is if you look on page, I think it's 113. 115. Is it 113 or 115? Well, the, the resolution's on 113. What do you want us to look at? Yeah, so 115. On 115 is 115. the assumptions page. So we changed, mm -hmm. Scott went in and changed the column. So now it says amended budget of FY18. Uh, and then we highlighted in green anything that's been changed. And then we went through in the general budget and just amended that column so it says amended FY18 budget and highlighted those four or five areas that had just changes so that they're highlighted in green for the public. Um, instead of redoing all the columns, we, uh, I thought it would be best to do that for now for the tentative budget to be sitting on public display. And then we also changed the resolution so that it says the board is approving a tentative amended budget. Let me read the resolution. Again. Sure. Resolve Board of Education Township High School District 208 Cook County, Illinois, hereby approves and adopts the tentative amended budget containing estimates of amounts available in each fund as an amended budget for said school district for the fiscal year 2017 18 in. Be it further resolved that this tentative amended budget fund adoption by this Board of Education shall be made conveniently available to the public for inspection for at least 30 days prior to final adoption thereof at the May 2018 committee or the whole meeting. And we, don't we have to post a public notice though on it too? It, it's going in the paper for Don't tomorrow. we have to say that in the resolution or not? We, don't we do that? We had to follow the same conditions as the original budget. The, uh, I don't think on the resolution you, you have okay. to do that. We are going to do yes, that. I'm we posting are. it in the, in the landmark tomorrow. Okay. Second. So can we get second? Okay. So just to clarify, you're amending revenues to include three the bond refinancing monies that we got in, the life safety new bond that we got in, and the working cash bond that we funded. And and the rev on the expenditure side. You're amending it to the use of refinancing the, the debt. We paid that off with the one debt issuance that we had. And then you're modifying the amount of working cash transfer expenditure. Correct. Between funds. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And then there's also the last, um, as part of this too, would be there was a working cash transfer from working cash to capital projects. For one additional payment of seventy thousand, that's also reflected. In there. Yeah. All right. And all those are highlighted, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's question. go for the vote. I ask one of the questions. Okay. okay. Hold on. Please. Another question. Are you able to, before we vote on this, take the what's on page one eighteen, the summary of the all the funds, and show how it's changed because of this? Uh, the big picture one. The operating didn't change on it. Um, Nothing changed. Operating expenditures, the revenue, no, that did not change. I just reflected everything with debt service. The well, it's, increase. It's all, it's all on. But don't we 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 don't we the, transfer to working cash? Don't we have the working cash that's always rolled into operating? Yes. So then you're going to show so us seventy thousand dollars additional. Okay. Right. Well, it would be the three million would would be in there. It's reflected. That's right. In there. That's right. 
three million. So, so the three million seventy six thousand it's in there. Where's that? That's on the revenue side. On the rev yes. Where's uh, on the working cash that so mm -hmm. we added the three million seventy six. Mm -hmm. So what was our old uh, the three numbers at the bottom? Uh, how much did that change? We or we didn't because you're not doing a working cash transfer. You have transfers on uh, 541,421, right, Scott? Yes. And so our, our net is 25, 2.5 million in working cash? Yes. So on the bottom, where you showed the operating fund balance and percent of operating expenditures, didn't that change? From that, that did change. That's reflecting that the additional 3 million. And what was it before? How did it change? That's, that's the problem. I'm trying to see what's, how does it, how is this amendment affecting our budget? So you'd have to... It, I might have to go back and check what the one is online. And again, if the other board members don't, as a majority, but I think it'd be helpful to know how it affects the actual budget. The numbers just show dropping in there, but it doesn't show how it affects what we originally thought we had. Right? Well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to increase our overall percentage that we have with the operating fund balance as a percent of that because you're adding in the additional three million in the working cash. So it's gonna appear Can as you just get, was that forty put the yeah it was at forty six oh nine still in the change right down there at the bottom. The, okay. That's the main thing we wanted. We can, we if we can do that with a highlight. Okay. Thank you. So Scott on the original budget you had four twenty five in working cash transfers. Now that's gone up to five twenty one. We yeah, have we added the seventy thousand to it. So if you went through the whole thing with working cash, there's also uh, some of the things in there with how they reflect the actual working cash bond issuance, you'll see that there's a cost of issuance in there. Okay, and then our operating fund balance as a percent of operating expenditures was 46, and now you're saying it's up to 58 because we got the additional the $3 additional million. Dollars. But that $3 million, we need to continue to remind the public and the board that that's three million dollars has been we passed part of our as part of our resolution to be held aside to work on the zoo project. Okay, so we just need to update that number uh, or put put next to it in green so that at least they see old and new. Okay, when we post that publicly. And one other clarification, Kevin said this. Rules or the law allows us to do it, but under certain circumstances, you have to do an amendment, don't you? If there's a variation of the 10 rule of thumb is if it's 10% over what your fund balance, with each fund that was over a purchase of over 10% of it, they recommend that you amend your budget. Well, we have to do it, yeah. If it's 10% of the line, mm -hmm. right? well we what I want to know is where we. Re I think it's a good idea, and the auditor said to do it, but were we also required to do it under this rule, too? You, technically, you should. It would be the correct way to do it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I've gotten different opinions from different business managers on do you amend the budget or do you let it go. I know that amending it does make it smoother for when the auditor comes in and does the actual audit for it. So they're not chasing down, okay, what did you do? Well, the ISP budget mechanics is the board action is required to authorize all line item transfers. If the aggregate of line item transfers on fund exceeds 10%, then the budget must be amended. So I don't know if we fit that. But I don't think just we had a transfer over 10%. Yeah, we'll just keep it in mind. Right. Sometimes you have to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, go for the vote. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Escott? Yes. Ms. Sierra? Yes. And Mr. Rich? Yes. All right. Um, we have matters for closed session. Personnel, student discipline, purchase or lease of real property, probable, intimate, and pending litigation, collective negotiation, school safety. There's another, this is another opportunity for visitors to make a statement. Looking out there, does anyone want to make a visitor statement? Seeing none. Uh, motion. 
Well, go with the motion to... Go on well, and then you have discussion items. I want to... Okay, now we have discussion items. And then we'll go for the... I just want to, because uh, I missed the first opportunity, to compliment uh, Ms. Prince and Mr. Baum for a successful band and choir trip. We brought 160 kids to New York. We didn't lose a single one of them. The band had the opportunity to play on the Intrepid, and we had the opportunity to go through that museum of World War II um, flight carrier. And then the choir had three different workshops with a professor from Kentucky, and then they sang together with several other choirs in the Carnegie Hall, Carnegie Hall. and the concert was about three and a half hours. Kids were all, kids, the young people were all very respectful, well-behaved. It was a nice time. They, they got to see the 9-11 memorial. They got to see Times Square. They got to see parts of New York. We, we saw the Statue of Liberty from across you know, the bay there. Um, saw a lot of things. The, ba the tour company uh, was excellent. Uh, one of the members of the tour company was a band director himself was great with the young people, you know, just he understood them inside and out and got along with them quite well. So it was really well done and um, just really wanted to say that publicly. Thank you. Okay. Sounds like it's it's all it board was education. Really, it was school. full. <laughs> District <laughs> 2 Cook County, yes. Illinois, enters closed session for the purpose of considering appointment employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, student discipline, purchase or lease of real property, probable, imminent, or pending litigation, collective negotiations, and school safety. <coughs> Second. For the vote. Um, Ms. Fresco? Yes. Ms. Sierra? Yes. Mr. Smithing? Yes. Mr. Wells? Yes. Yes. All right, uh, how about uh, 